Gigantomachia Perites Usias, the gigantic battle for being, for the meaning of being. That's how being in time begins on the first page. Second sentence in Sein und Zeit. And you know that when you hold it in your hands, this book is pure fire. Pur I ate one, ever living fire, as Heraclitus says. Heraclitus, who is on the same plane, the same weird plane as Heidegger, because it all begins to come back all at once in waves. And Heidegger says here that even though we're now dealing with in scholarly terms with more metaphysics in the 1920s, we do not think, or people at the time did not think, that this gigantic battle, a quote from Plato's sophists, would still at all be important. So even though metaphysics did make a comeback and became more important again, and as you know, analytical philosophers are now also engaging in metaphysics, even though they're supposedly anti-metaphysical, that's how they started, it's all turning into some sort of weird metaphysics but this fundamental question of the meaning of being isn't asked even though it's kept thinking itself philosophy going alive breathing for thousands of years without being without the question of being no meaning we need to ask the question of being thematically and properly in order to gain again an access what heidegger is doing here he's pointing out is that we're already beginning to lose a sense of being a sense that we used to have perhaps but that even if there is the greatest scholarship about all kinds of philosophy of all the ex historical figures that we can have access to that doesn't mean that we do get a genuine access to a proper experience of what these thinkers have gone through. So this is already the difference that Heidegger points out between his project and other projects, which is why he this book is literally on fire. And I would just like to point out very briefly that if you'd like to read Heidegger with me in, in private tutorial sessions, reach out to me via email, which you'll find below, or reach out to me over pay, through Patreon, and we can find, I'm sure, some sort of arrangement where we can do this. And But he says that this is very important, that the point that Heidegger makes from the very beginning is that the question of being and all of its variations and all of its colorings have kept everything going from Plato and Aristotle and even before from Parmenides up towards the logic of Hegel. And then what happens in the 19th, 20th century is we begin to lose genuine access to that question. We begin to forget the question of being. And as we forget being, meaning begins to disappear. It is not upon us simply to bring it back as if we could manufacture meaning. It is a different stance we must take. Now, what is it, very briefly, that Heidegger means with the word das Sein, being? Ens qua ens, beings as beings. The being itself lies in the qua, it lies in the as such that beings light up, show themselves as a certain being, as something, the tree as the tree of life, the tree as somewhere where I can sit down and dwell and linger. And what Heidegger points us towards is that this is not only some sort of theoretical, cognitive or intellectual pursuit by some philosophers in their ivory towers, but know that everything is at stake. Gigantomachia peritesusias, the gigantic battle for the meaning of being, is being carried out all the time, even if in total silence and in concealment, 
even if we're not even aware that this question could be a question but we do ask who am i or what is this the fact that we can say that something is indicates already that this question is always at stake now heidegger goes on in section one on the necessity that why is this chapter entitled the necessity of an explicit um, repetition of the question of being this is how the book begins so there's an explicit necessity to necessity hmm? okay so let's let's think about what does it mean that when a philosopher says or a thinker says who stands in a certain tradition that there is a necessity now this means that this question is not contingent this means that he does not make up this question from out of thin air this means that this question has shown itself as necessary throughout the ages we are so cut off from our origin that we no longer even consider this question an appropriate question we think that heidegger is talking about something mystical up here some weird godlike entity that comes and does something no that's that's not being it's, it's on some level the simplest question and of course it unfolds to its its own it, it, when it comes into its own it, it it's the the most pressing issue the only question for for heidegger and but it isn't a, a question he simply just makes up or pretends that as some people think oh no one else has thought of this except for me no he does he never says this what he says is that this question is being of being is now currently losing its bearing on us while at the same time this gigantic battle is being fought and he points us to this historical plane to this weird dimension of the history of of, of, of philosophy of this of this question itself in in a way that no philosopher ever got around this question what's the fundamental question of early modern modern metaphysics is why is there something rather than nothing now aristotle in the metaphysics asks tito on what are beings or what beings tito on that's the question the one question parmenides speaks of being and so does hegel hegel determines being as immediate and in or the indeterminate immediate that's how the logic of science the wissenschaftslogik begins it begins with being nothing which so being is indeterminate immediacy and nothing is indeterminate immediacy so there is some sort of an identity between the two hence they collapse and as they collapse becoming comes about so becoming is as it were the re the result from nothing and being and nothing collapsing into each other each retaining its its own ways its own essence but collapsing into becoming and off it goes to um something and not something and difference and identity etc we don't have to get into the science of logic for now but it's important to see that this question was the always the question even nietzsche who was supposedly uh totally radically different when he th thinks of being he thinks of it in this traditional sense of that which is permanent stable and becoming is its opposite right but of course for heidegger there's something else at stake for for being but being itself can have a sense of becoming and what he never the, what the, the the one thing though he points us to is that this question has kept everything going and without this question the fire stops the fire is extinguished and he actually says in the contributions to philosophy a book he writes 10 years after being in time that the incredible fire has extinguished there's almost nothing left now and so it's almost a warning that he says and this is why this is why dasein he, he talks he considers dasein in its everydayness dasein is not the human being but dasein is this genuine openness towards being such that beings light up 
in a certain way and meaningful to us. What, why do we live in an age of nihilism? Because we don't ask the question of being, because nothing lights up in its own right. It simply lights up as some, as some function, of, for example, to be exploited, right? Everything's a resource. And this is why Heidegger does not just mention Aristotle and Plato and Hegel in the first on the first couple of pages, but also in the second so-called prejudice about being. He, or sorry, in the uh, third prejudice about being, the second prejudice is, is, is a more philosophical point on, on the fact that you cannot define being, therefore we don't need to consider being itself. But Heidegger says there's something else, and that's in everyday speech. And to quote from Osip Mandelstam, uh, a Russian author, a Russian writer, he says that everyday speech is automatic. Heidegger, Heidegger says the almost exact same thing, um, that we live, when we speak in, in an everyday mode, what we actually say is also automated. We don't have to think, nothing interrupts. Poetic speech interrupts. Goethe says almost the same thing. Goethe says, you know, we get by in our everyday dealings with normal language. But as soon as something, as soon as something is at stake, something is really at stake, we need a different language. A different language sets in, and that's poetic language that interrupts us. And Heidegger interrupts our immediate understanding of being in the sense that he says, why is it that be being to be is apparently such a you know a selbstverständliche begriff something so ordinary it's just self-evident it's a self-evident concept because in in all as he says here in all erkennen aussagen so in all cognizing or recognition and all knowing or coming to know the world and in all proposition making or in all articulate, in all ways of articulating, in every comportment towards beings, to quote from Heidegger, in every even comportment towards oneself, right? I am, you are, I am here, you're over there. I am Johannes, you are someone else. The sky is blue, this room is small. In all of these, there lingers an implicit understanding of being. And what grammar has done to the word to be, sein, essere, l'être, is to, well, reduce being and simply say, oh, it's self-evident. Don't worry, it's just a copula, copula, right? It simply brings subject and, and object or subject and predicate together and, and that's, that's all, right? There, there's nothing nothing itself in being that that that, that could that, that does anything we can just get rid of, of of being and this is what logic of course or for, formal logic does P empty logic formal logic is empty and dead right that, that, that's what it is it's logistics it, it's empty and, and dead and there's nothing there that could that could bring being itself to light it, just, it can actually just get rid of being now i am pleased or I'm happy as Heidegger um, so he says everyone can understand the sky is blue but why is it that we all can understand that the sky is blue so the is for Heidegger becomes important he will even go so far in the 1950s and 60s to say that in the little word is lies the fate of the Occident. And the little word is, in terms of its philosophical history, in the little word is, that's where the fate is decided. What is beings? What deep to on? What are beings? If they are determined as a standing reserve, then we destroy the earth as a planet, represented as a planet, as a resource to be exploited. We exploit ourselves because we've for some reason determined it's so. And the very simple question is just to interrupt us right there in these apparently or seemingly immediate understandings of being in our everyday mode and point to something ecstatic that happens in all of them. And then we'll get to time at some point. 
as well on ecstatic temporality i think that's something that's absolutely necessary to talk about very soon so this is just the first couple of pages of the book for anyone who's who wants to know more who wants to read more reach out to me we can arrange some private tutorial i've had private students on heidegger for many many of them some of them for three and a half years now and it would be if you are just you know even if you are coming to heidegger just now even if you've read him for a couple of years it's always good to maybe go a bit more in depth and see where he's coming from because heidegger is responding to something extremely profound he's responding all at once to german idealism plato aristotle parmenides and heraclitus and of course plato and aristotle so thank you very much for listening please subscribe to the channel and leave a comment farewell